my name is Kevin Ponto. I am an assistant professor in the Design Studies Department at the School of Human Ecology. I have a very strange uh, dual appointment, also in the Wisconsin Institute for Discovery, that is beyond the scope of today's lecture. Um, but I also have affiliates in the Computer Science Department, in the Arts Institute, and in Industrial Systems Engineering. So um, I'm kind of all over campus in lots of different capacities, and um, get to do lots of fun stuff here. But what I'm going to talk to you today about is kind of my experiences with WordPress. And when John invited me, I said, look, there's nothing I'm doing that's super complicated. This isn't rocket science. And he said, that's great. Um, I'm kind of more curious about just WordPress experiences in teaching. Um, so that's what we'll talk about today. Nothing, nothing too long, nothing too crazy. Um, but let, let's start with this question of why in the world would you want to use WordPress? Because there's lots of different things you could use. Um, Campus provides other types of, of e-learning and online systems. And in all honesty, this goes back to the first course I taught here. And this was um, a temporary course. It was um, this course entitled Projects in Virtual Reality. Uh, at the time I was a postdoc, and my mentor was um, a big fan of using WordPress. And he had said, I think you should use WordPress for your classes. And the reason why he had come to that conclusion is that he had this problem in his class about announcements. That in class, you would go, and he would make an announcement on the board, in class, but you'd have students that weren't there in that class and they would say, I missed class, I never heard the announcement, I never realized I was supposed to do that. So another thing people would do is they'd send emails, right? You'd send an email to your students, but then the students would say, oh, it went to my junk filter, or I missed it, I didn't know I was supposed to do the assignment, and so he got very tired of all of this, and so he made a WordPress site. And this became this online forum in which he could post assignments, he could post expectations, um, and he even hooked it up to an RSS feed so people could subscribe to the RSS feed and they could get all the information. And he thought this was great, but when I jumped in I thought, man, you know, I think there's something more we can do with this WordPress site. And part of this went into part of my teaching philosophy, which is uh, when I was an undergrad student I had a lot of classes that had this philosophy. They said, we're going to make class be a competition, the best students will rise to the top, this is going to be great. This is going to motivate other students to learn better. I will say I had more experiences in which this model turned into this. Um, which students sabotaged other students, in which the classroom became a very toxic environment. I did not like this model as a student, and I don't like it as a teacher either. I think there are times it works, but I prefer to think about my classroom as a community in which we're all trying to learn together, in which we're all trying to build off of each other's experiences. And so from this philosophy, the WordPress model actually fits really nicely. Um, so, oops, in this class, uh, we use it as a posting mechanism, we post assignments, we post uh, information about the class, you know, syllabi, those kind of things. But the other thing that we did is we used it as a forum. So I just created, for this first class, uh, a title of basically a forum entitled Things of Interest. And when students went and found some cool video, some cool project, um, you know, a lot of times they emailed me and I said, why don't you just post into this forum? And the other students can see it and other students can uh, look at this. Now, I never gave any credit for this. This was not anything that I, that I incentivized, but it just kind of happened organically. Uh, another thing that we did, and I've done this in, in most of the courses I've taught, is to, to use it as a forum for reading discussion. So, I'll do weekly readings, I'll post the readings, I'll post the links to where they can find the articles, and then I'll usually post some discussion points. Here are things that you should think about, uh, look into, usually it starts out very kind of uh, structured, and as the semester goes on we become less and less structured, as the students kind of get a sense of, of expectations. And I found this to be really nice for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them is the students can read these articles and really put some thought into what they want to say. Um, so they can read it, they can think about it, they can digest, they can write this out. Uh, but number two is that some students, um, I found, are kind of shy in class. They don't like to talk a lot. They're not necessarily ones to raise their hands. But when you give them this type of way to express themselves, you'll read these uh, discussion points that are just really brilliant. 
and really inspiring and gives you a different glimpse into kind of their intellect and their capabilities. Uh, the other thing is that um, this has allowed me, before class starts, to look at kind of the sense of all the students and to say, okay, when we just read this article, here was their takeaway, and to structure class discussions based on this. And this has become more and more important as my classes have grown, and um, as opposed to being able to do things more ad hoc, I've now had to, to structure my classes before I go into them more, so this has been really invaluable for me as a professor. Uh, the other thing we've done with WordPress sites is use them as a method to document student projects. And um, again, this has turned into kind of an interesting uh, approach in which we've gotten lots of different things out of it. So one of the things we've gotten is we've said, okay, students need to post weekly on the project updates. And this gives us a way to make sure that students are on track, but it also gives a way to kind of uh, show that, that all the, the different work that students are doing. So um, as the students are building their projects, we can see what they're doing. Um, like I said, we can make sure that they're on track. But uh, it also has this really interesting effect where the students can then at the end of the semester kind of look back by their entire method, where they started, what they thought they were going to do, all of these little steps along the way, and kind of see from the end how they got there. Okay, so this is all cool, but why in the world would you want to do this? Um, and the big question here really is, uh, why would you want to do this over something else, right? Because there's lots of different options out there. So in terms of WordPress itself, uh, the interface is actually really nice. It's a GUI interface. Um, people can just write content, and it basically the content is removed from how it looks. Uh, if you were a web developer in the 90s, this was totally foreign, right? Back then, you generally wrote HTML code, and these two things were intertwined. So it does a nice job of that. Um, it also is really easy to embed other types of media. So YouTube in particular, you want to into, uh, embed a YouTube video, you copy the URL, you paste it into the post, it automatically formats it, it automatically puts it in there. Um, so this makes it really easy for students to jump in, put things online. They don't need to understand how websites work, how the underlying infrastructure works. Um, but I think the biggest thing is this point, which is this public face. And um, you know, I think this is really interesting. There's a couple things that you get out of having a public facing website. So the first one is that especially for student projects, this ends up being a reference. Um, so right, they've posted this project, they've posted the things they bought, the way they've, they've created this project. And uh, for one of the courses I teach in wearable technology, students often go back to other courses and see what other students did and can follow what worked, what didn't work, maybe the items they bought, um, where the sticking points were. So this has been really, really valuable to allow basically current students and future students to look back on previous students' approaches. The second thing is, uh, as a professor, I get asked to write letters of recommendation. This provides really nice documentation. Um, a lot of times, when I write a letter, I will point back to work that students did in the class, maybe postings they did, and said, look, here is documentation of this student's capabilities and uh, intellectual capacity. Um, also, I think it's really interesting when I've had students who aren't in the courses and they say, what are some good readings um, for virtual reality? I can just point them to these websites and say, here are the readings we do in the class. You can go read them yourself. Um, and it, it ends up being a way that students outside the class can kind of start getting some sense of what's going on in the class. And I think this goes to a bigger picture, which is kind of the idea of the Wisconsin idea, where what we're doing in our courses has this outreach beyond just our students, beyond campus. Other people can see everything we're doing, um, and it allows them to, to, to get a sense of kind of what we're doing here. So, having said all that, there are problems with this, and you probably have thought of quite a few. Um, let me go over some of the ones that, that have come up more readily in my experiences. 
Um, the first question is, who in the world hosts this? So the first time I taught my class, this was hosted from the computer science department. But since then, uh, I'm kind of lucky that the Wisconsin Institute for Discovery has a WordPress site that they want as an institute. They've decided that all PIs of the institute can request WordPress sites. I don't know how much longer they're going to do this. I think they've gotten annoyed with me for constantly <laughs> asking for new WordPress sites. But um, they're the ones who currently <laughs> host and administer this. And this is really important because this goes to this question of who is going to monitor the site. Who's going to make sure that the site is up and running, that it isn't broken? And the bigger issue is, how do you make sure the site hasn't been hacked? And let me say that I have personal experience with this in particular. So I am currently a web chair for the IEEE Virtual Reality Conference. I was a web chair for 2017. I was also a web chair for 2016. When I was a web chair for 2016, the 2015 version of this site was completely hacked. Used WordPress, some people from likely Africa hacked it, they put a bunch of pictures of dead bodies on the site. It was atrocious. It, I mean, it was just awful. I, I could not even show you what they did to the site. What the current um, approach of this uh, organization is, is we no longer use WordPress. We now use this thing called Jekyll. Uh, we more or less write code. The code is compiled into a website. The website is then manually uploaded. It is a complete hassle and pain, but it's pretty secure. We're not really worried about someone hacking into our WordPress site. Uh, so what does WID do about this? Because as I said, lots of people use WordPress. As soon as there's an exploit, people go out and just try to find all the WordPress sites to see if they can hack into it. Um, so it has kind of an interesting idea. What they say is they say you can only access the site if you're on campus. This makes it a lot easier to try to prevent people from Russia hacking in. Uh, but there's a downside to this, which is for all the students who are off campus, they need to use VPN into campus. I will say this is a semester to semester. Some semesters, the students get this. This is no big deal at all. Other semesters, the students remember to do it and then forget they know how to do this. Um, and this can come, this can be like a weird issue that just keeps reoccurring over class. So this is this is with solution. It's not a terrible one, but it does create an extra burden. Um, a few other considerations. Uh, if everything's public, what do you do about anonymous data? And this is always a really tricky one, right? So in the wearable technology course, we have students who say, I'm developing something super duper awesome. I want to go out, I want to make a company. I don't want to put all of this information online for everyone to see. You know, I think this is a really interesting consideration. We've usually tried to advise them to kind of steer into a range in which they're presenting things at a high enough level that people wouldn't know exactly what they're doing. They don't have enough information to recreate it, but this is a really uh, tricky issue. Um, I would say another issue you have is that if everything is put online and you're teaching a course, which is very similar, uh, how do you make sure future and current students don't use other students in other classes work and plagiarize it and just repeat it. So one really simple thing I've done is for all the reading postings before every class starts, all the previous students' comments and postings to readings uh, are basically pulled off of the site. They no longer become public because I don't want some student in a current class to go back to a previous student's reading and just copy their post. But um, you know, this, this, this is kind of a solution to that specific problem. I think the problem in general is something that, you know, is something that definitely comes up when you make something that's public facing. Um, so uh, I think I'll just kind of conclude here and say that, uh, you know, WordPress is really interesting. It, it definitely makes creating a website very quick and easy. Um, because it is so popular, there are issues with it. There are issues with doing something public facing. There are issues of how do you make sure that these sites are maintained in the future. But um, I, I think to me, for my classes, this is a lot of the pros of using this have kind of outweighed the cons. 
and I will say uh, for anyone who knows, any students who are interested, uh, in the spring, this is a shameless promotion. I'm teaching, co-teaching the course on wearable technology. We build kind of cool projects using technology, figuring out how we embed them into clothing, and we are using WordPress for this, this class.